and the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin. Um, until very recently, the Arctic has been seen by many as a, rem as a remote corner of the planet, mostly untouched by the great affairs of the world. But that's all changing. As global warming melts vast swathes of the Arctic, it will become an important thoroughfare of trade, cutting the length of time, for example, it takes to travel from the Atlantic to the Pacific by 40%. Um, it is also becoming a new source of energy for the world. We have LNG from the Yamal Peninsula going east and west to China uh, and markets in Europe. Some experts estimate that the Arctic accounts for a fifth of the world's undiscovered oil and gas reserves. And as the Arctic becomes more important, it's also becoming the focus of increasing military and political tension. Peaceful for so long, the Arctic risks now becoming a new theater for conflict and tension among the great powers. Ultimately, the Arctic is now more important probably than at any point um, in, human, in world history. My name is John Fracker, Senior Executive Editor at Bloomberg News, and I'm delighted to discuss uh, these topics with our esteemed panel today. So in the beginning, we're going to hear some short speeches from the panelists before embarking on what I hope will be a lively and meaningful uh, debate. Um, let me introduce the panel again very uh, quickly. We have Erno Solberg, the Prime Minister of Norway. Uh, we have Stefan Lövjan, the Prime Minister of Sweden. Um, we have Soli Ninesto, the President of Finland. And we have Gutni Johansson, the President of Iceland. And of course, the President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, who will now give us some opening remarks. President Putin, please. Distinguished Mr. Niniester, Mr. Johanneson, Madam Silberg, Mr. Levin, ladies and gentlemen, friends, I sincerely welcome all of you to St. Petersburg, the northern capital of uh, Russia. It is a city whose history is closely interconnected with the organization of the legendary Arctic expeditions, the industrial exploration of this unique region, the preservation of its environment and unique culture. It is the fifth time that the International Forum Arctic, the territory of dialogue, becomes a platform for a view, an exchange of views, a wide exchange of views on the agenda. We are grateful to our foreign guests, to the representatives of the countries that are members of the Arctic Council for their willingness to engage in a partnership, as well as for understanding that we've got a joint responsibility for the future of Arctic for its sustainable and sustainable, stable development. In 2021, Russia is going to assume its chairmanship in the Arctic Council and will suggest to all member countries of this organization as well as other countries to cooperate in the Arctic. The priorities of our chairmanship all comprise uh, burning issues for the development of the Arctic. I refer in particular to the promotion of environmentally friendly technologies in all fields and in industry, transport and energy based on the cutting edge environmental standards. We implement our projects in the Arctic and some of them are of global importance. Uh, suffice it to mention the LNG facility in the Yamal Peninsula, the exploration of the Bovenenteska and Karasaveska deposits. The Arctic accounts for more than 10 percent of all investment in Russia, and I'm confident that the Arctic factor is only going to grow in its significance. This year alone, we intend to elaborate and accept the new Arctic development strategy for Russia until 2035. It's going to comprise both our national projects, state programs, investment strategies of infrastructure companies, as well as the programs for the development of Arctic regions and cities in terms of key social and economic parameters, in terms of standards of living. All of the Arctic regions have to be propelled to a level no lower than the Russian average. I I'd like to draw attention to the fact that this task should not just be included and defined clearly in our new strategy. It should be a guideline for all federal 
government agencies and regional authorities of Russia. Specifics have to be taken into account related to the small indigenous peoples of the north. A special attention should be given to building infrastructure, the bulk and mainstream infrastructure related as well. And business initiatives have to be promoted as well. Among the key infrastructure projects, I can name the construction of the Northern Latitudinal Railway. That's a railway that will allow us to efficiently start exploring the mining reaches of Polo Ural and the Krasnoyarsk region, its northern parts in future, as well as the Arctic as well. And a global transportation corridor is going to be built comprising the northern sea route that is going to work in an uninterrupted fashion all year through. And my message to the Federal Assembly in 2018, I said that we wanted to increase the freight volume there by 2025 to 80 million tons a year. 10, 15 years ago, this figure seemed unattainable, but right now it's a realistic, well-calculated goal, a concrete goal to accomplish. Last year, the freight volume through the Northern Sea Route hit the mark of 20 million, which is three times the Soviet record, which was reached back in 1987. Back then, the Soviet Union organized the transportation of 6.5 million tons of freight, whereas right now it's 20 million. But for this corridor to hit its maximum capacity, we've got to develop, and we're going to develop, the infrastructure, both the sea infrastructure, coast infrastructure, navigation instruments, meteorological satellites, as well as other infrastructure. We invite our foreign partners to help us build hubs and port. I refer to Murmansk and Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky as the main terminal hubs. We're also going to modernize the Arctic coast ports and organize uh, the capacity for transportation by river and by sea. We're also going to increase our icebreaker fleet right now here in St. Petersburg where we are. Currently, three new icebreakers are being under construction, Arctic, Siberia, and Ural. On the whole, by 2035, the icebreaker fleet is going to have no less, no fewer than 13 uh, heavy icebreakers, and nine of them are going to be nuclear-powered. Our goal is to make the Northern Sea Route secure, safe, and profitable to supplies. It's going to and it should be attractive in terms of price and the quality of services. The fees have to be well substantiated for icebreaker assistance. And that is why the government is investing into this field in order to minimize the burden, the supplies, the business uh, incurring friends to increase the capital investment into the region, we would like to use all the instruments, in particular those that we have already successfully tested in our development strategies for the Russian Far East. I refer first and foremost to the preferential income tax rates, the decreasing coefficients for the mining tax, as well as a special procedure for the VAT reimbursement. There is also a facilitated procedure for getting plots of land, and there's also a clause of uh, permanence of the conditions for investment projects there. Given the unique nature of the Arctic, the preferences for the businesses are going to be even more advanced, even more sustainable. The government is working together with the experts and business representatives. They have been instructed to come up with a draft federal law on a special preferential system for the investors into the Arctic. I would like to request everyone to do that as soon as possible for this draft law to be adopted by the State Duma as early as its autumn session. Another issue I'd like to draw attention to, ladies and gentlemen, as we know, the uh, 
powers of the Ministry for the Development of the Far East uh, have been expanded. Right now, the Arctic also falls within its remit. That is why I believe it would be a good idea to expand the institutions for the development of the Russian Far East to the Arctic as well. But for that, we need the additional capitalization of the Russian Far East Development Fund for targeted funding of projects. For a comprehensive development of this region to address the issues, non-standard issues that we encounter there so far north, we need a new basis, technological basis, a new human resources basis, and that is why we have already got down to build special training centers, integrating research institutions, universities, businesses, the real sector of the economy. And such a center is also going to be set up in one of our Arctic regions. Its task is to develop fundamental sciences and also applied sciences with regard to the exploration of the Arctic. We believe that the future lies in the hands of active university exchanges, within the hands of international research teams, and we invite all those who are interested to work together in shipbuilding, communications, safety of navigation and environmental protection, mining, as well as the exploration of bioresources. The Arctic sets before us enormous challenges. We can only live up to them efficiently if we work together. One of these challenges, as I mentioned before, is striking a balance between economic development and preserving the Arctic nature saving its fragile, unique ecosystems, as well as eliminating the damage that has accumulated in the consumerism, consumerist approach to industrial there, activities there. We have been involved in the complete cleanup of the Arctic. Starting from 2012, we have taken away there and, you'd, and uh, uh, reprocessed more than 80,000 tons of litter, and there are also six accumulated uh, places of damage in Arkhangel region in Kareli, in Yakutia, in the Malonenetsky district, and uh, we are cleaning up these uh, spots there, and the Kola Peninsula, uh, the Kola Bay is also going to be cleaned up, and we're also establishing a new national parks. I refer first and foremost to the Russian Arctic National Park. It is important to make sure that additional measures are taken for environmental tourism to be fostered here and for the special infrastructure to be set up there. In conclusion, I'd like to thank everyone, the guests of our forum. I'm confident that our constructive dialogue is going to help reinforce good neighborly relations as well as mutual trust in the Arctic, and that, in turn, will help us ensure sustainable and peaceful development of the Arctic. Thank you very much for your attention. President Putin, thank you very much. If I could just ask um, a very brief uh, follow-up question before um, our, our next speech. You, you talked a lot about Arctic developments, and I want to get on to that later. But as we, at the beginning of this panel, um, I'd like to ask you, I guess, a broad question um, about the politics of the region and, indeed, the politics of Russia's relations with the EU. Um, today on the stage, we have the leaders of, of Sweden and Norway, and you will be meeting um, them for the first time in a long time. Um, does this feel somehow like a breakthrough moment in the sense that perhaps the bad relations that the EU has had, that Russia has had with the EU um, over the last few years might be starting to thaw? Well, unfortunately, there is a thaw in the Arctic, that's true. And the changes in the temperature in the Arctic are happening at a faster pace than elsewhere on the planet. It, the temperature changes four times as fast in the Arctic. It increases four times as fast as elsewhere in the planet. But as far as political uh, relations are concerned. It is a positive shift, no doubt. Well, in my remarks, uh, I said that we never severed our contacts in the Arctic. Just now, I had a bilateral meeting with the President of Finland, and we recalled that we had had these meetings on a regular basis. Right now, Finland has assumed the chairmanship of the Arctic Council, and Finland has done very much to uh, 
discuss and find a solution to the key issues such as the preservation of the Arctic nature. Finland is paying constant attention to any issues that might arise and that we should address together. The Arctic agenda helps us understand the need for cooperation, for working together jointly to find solutions to the challenges we have. That is very good. Thank you. And we'll be talking about the politics of the region much more later um, in the Q&A. But I think now it's time for President Inesto of Finland. Please, the stage is yours.